In 1995, the Shell Oil Company wanted to decommission a North Sea oil facility called Brent Spa, and it had two choices. Either clean it up, tow it back to harbour, break it apart and dispose of it on land, or clean it up, tow it to a deep part of the ocean and sink it. The first option was much more expensive, so they went for the second option. Environmentalists objected, and Greenpeace launched a campaign to stop the sinking. They even boarded the facility, eventually forcing Shell to tow the boat to Norway, cut it up and dispose of it on land, at a cost of £41 million, more than double what it would have cost to dispose of it at sea. I remember the incident well because it was the first time I thought, have we reached the stage where environmentalists are now supporting actions that do nothing for the environment, simply on a point of principle? And those thoughts were reignited recently when I heard a radio interview with Doug Parr, Greenpeace's chief scientist, trying to justify their opposition. Well, it follows a long tradition and principle that the ocean should not be used as a dump site because we understand very little about the oceans and how they work. And so uh, the idea that they should be used as a trash can is inappropriate. Not a garbage dump, not a trash can. It's very poetic and triggers the emotions. But what does it actually mean? No time to elaborate, just stick that on the bumper. We're now on to reason number two. You should no more dump stuff at sea when you've finished with it any more than one should dump a car in the village pond when you've finished with it. Even if environmental assessments say, wouldn't it be great because it would provide additional nutrients to the pond life. It's a principle of cleaning up after yourself. So those are the two arguments. According to Dr. Parr, sinking a cleaned-up steel structure in deep water is the same as dumping garbage at sea or dumping cars in the village pond. It doesn't matter whether science shows that the first would cause minimal environmental damage and the other two are hugely polluting and kill sea and pond life. As a matter of principle, yeah, they're all the same thing. And yet three years later, when it was time for Greenpeace to decommission a steel structure of its own, Guess what they did with it? But of course, the Rainbow Warrior wasn't dumped. That was the word used to describe Shell's action. The Brent Spa was dumped. Rainbow Warrior was placed. Yes, placed on the seabed. While Shell's steel structure was described as garbage, Greenpeace's steel structure was described as a fearless, undisputed icon. Now you may say, but Rainbow Warrior is now a reef for sea life. That means it's dumping oh, sorry, placing on the seabed, was good for the environment. Yeah, but that's kind of the point. This is the Rainbow Warrior recently. It makes a wonderful reef. Just look at all the life, the fish. And you probably didn't even notice that we're now no longer looking at the Rainbow Warrior. This is the underside of an oil facility off the coast of California, because sea life flourishes under oil rigs too. Mollusks, crustaceans and seaweed, even coral, attach themselves to the legs. Fish spawn and juvenile fish grow in the protective structure. Just like Rainbow Warrior, cleaned and decontaminated rigs make wonderful reefs, which is why hundreds of these rigs are being left in place. Same thing here, offshore oil facilities in the Gulf of Mexico. Now, of course, the Brent Spa, which was going to be dumped in a deep, cold part of the North Atlantic, wouldn't have made a reef. There's no reason why it couldn't have been taken somewhere else for that purpose. But that's why having a blanket principle simply doesn't work. I'm not intending to bash Greenpeace here, just saying that each case has to be looked at on its scientific merits. And that's kind of what this video is about. I know I don't usually make opinion videos, but this is one. It's all opinion. So, my apologies, but no debunks here. There's now an environmental movement, many of them scientists, that very sensibly say if sinking rigs is, on balance, better for the environment, then forget the dogma and the principle, let's go with what works. Billions of dollars have been spent decommissioning these oil rigs on land. Surely an agreement could have been reached whereby the oil companies would pledge half of that money towards environmental causes, like preserving rainforests or building wind farms, maybe charging points for electric cars, and then sink the structures at little cost to the environment. The idea that principle is more important than outcomes has been ably demonstrated by a movement that started in Britain and is now beginning to spread. It's called the Just Stop Oil Campaign. 
Protesters slow walk in front of cars, causing huge traffic jams. They sabotage sporting events, try to vandalize paintings and disrupt weddings. All, they say, to draw attention to their cause. Now, I don't really know what their cause is, except what's printed on their banners, because whenever I see news items about this group, their message is overwhelmed by reports of disruption and damage and how pissed off members of the public are. If you listen to the audience of snooker lovers here, I promise you that all the bleeps are not covering up cries of encouragement and support. I'm no expert, but it seems to me that the last thing any protest group should want is to have the aim of the protest drowned out by the effects of the protest. So this question, to a Just Stop Oil spokesperson, is one that I'd really like answered. But but I'm interested to know about these tactics. What evidence do you have that blocking the busiest motorway in the UK, causing endless disruption for tens of thousands of people, is actually achieving anything? We need everybody to come to join us so we don't have to cause this type of disruption. In other words, no evidence at all. And why is that not surprising? If I stood in the street and asked you to sign a petition, would I really be more successful if I deliberately blocked your path and grabbed your arm to stop you getting away? Would that make you more sympathetic to my cause or more antagonistic? These protests are not only alienating the public, they're a godsend for news organisations that want to pretend that the link between CO2 and global temperature isn't driven by science, it's driven by what they call... Eco-crackpots. And now they have the footage to make their point. If I were that mother, because my son was born very, very ill, um, it was touch and go for a while, I think I would have driven through them. Not only can they characterise this incident at a government minister's wedding as a callous and unfeeling disruption, they were also able to brand it as hypocritical when they discovered that the Just Stop Oil protester responsible had recently jetted off to Thailand. We need to be sat outside Parliament with tens and tens of thousands of people demanding an end to, to new oil and gas. Even if the minimum demand is no new oil and gas, which isn't what's printed on the posters, how's it working out? Just a few weeks after that video of the woman trying to take her baby to a hospital was aired, the government did the exact opposite of what the campaign wanted as a bare minimum. It reversed course and announced a new round of oil and gas licences in the North Sea. And the reason it did that is because just a couple of weeks earlier, there'd been a voter backlash against London's Labour government trying to extend low-emission zones known as ULEZ. Now, I don't know of any evidence that the public voted against this environmental policy because they were fed up with the Just Stop Oil protesters, but it's pretty clear that the protest did very little to make the voting public more supportive of this environmental policy. I admire the sincerity and the passion of these groups and the fact that they understand the severity of the problem. So why not channel all that energy and passion into campaigns that do focus public attention on the climate issue or protests that are carefully targeted and achieve results that help the environment? Alienating people by disrupting their lives and alienating companies by forcing them into pointless expense and alienating half the electorate with policies that voters don't support and have nothing to do with the environment, is not doing any favours for the environment or the fight to reduce CO2 emissions. Principles and passions are great, but if they move things backwards instead of forwards, then they're as pointless as... as this. We are the European People's Front! Crack Suicide Squad! Suicide Squad! Attack! That showed him, huh? You silly sods. Well, that's just my two cents worth, and I thought it might encourage a bit of debate in the comments section. Sorry this isn't a proper video doing what I'm supposed to be doing on this channel, but that is coming up. I've got a video in the pipeline on Golden Crocoduck nominees ahead of the award itself on October 28th. Then comes part two of my last video about the claim that the Earth faces a global cataclysm when the magnetic poles flip. I'm still working on that, so it may not be posted until November or December. 
And don't forget the charity which I ask you to support in lieu of a Patreon account. It's an innovative scheme that trades healthcare for preserving rainforests, resulting in a huge reduction in deforestation and an increase in health. Details are in the video description, as always. And please follow me on threads, where I'll make the occasional announcement between videos, keeping you up to date. See you in the next one.